spiritual topics that are misunderstood. Hey guys, so just jumping on to do a real quick video about some topics that came to me um, that were um, shown to me that they're kind of a misunderstanding and how we are interpreting them. So I just want to do a quick video on that. So there are some topics out there that people misunderstand um, or how the way they're receiving them or um, interpreting them. So talking about predictions is one of them. So did a little writing on that, channeling and tuning in to that. And so um, I actually woke up with this as a topic to talk about because a lot of us may not have it completely 100% um, in the way that from how I'm receiving it. And so also with the book that I'm channeling the way through the I Am Discourse. So um, just going to put that out there for you. And, you know, you be the judge of what you feel is resonates with you or not, you know, as far as what resonates, you know, for you to be true, right? So um, <clears throat> talking about predictions, you know, um, so I was watching a video about this spiritual person who was saying she's making predictions. And what she does is she follows, she tunes in intentionally and follows this one path, right? So first off, there's so many paths. There's not just one path. There's so many paths. And we all put a part into it, a play into it, right? So we, these are all streams of consciousness. So there's not just one path. And so the only thing that she was doing was tuning into the path of her direction, seeing from that point, which ended up being, I guess, 2300 to predict what would happen in 2300, right? 2300. So with that being said, there are so many paths that you can go and take based on the present moment. And so every time you make a change in the present moment, it changes the future. So no prediction is set in stone. It's an opportunity potential to happen. Doesn't mean it's going to happen based on that, right? And so her perception of where she is tuning into her higher frequency to follow that one path is what she ended up with in 2300. Doesn't make it true. Doesn't make it's going to happen. But then again, it's going to be from her view, right? Because what is her path that she's choosing from this present moment to be there? It's not for everybody because then that would be saying she's choosing that for everybody, Right now, we all have free will and choice, so that's not that's only going what's going to happen in her realm, if that makes sense, because we all have our own experiences, right? And so it is not true for everyone; it's only true for her. What her perception is, what her life is going to be like in two thousand three hundred, it's not for everybody, because I don't choose somebody to predict for me, right? And when you do that, you're giving your power away. If that makes sense. So when people are doing predictions, I would stay or gear away from that. Maybe listen to it, but use it as a tool. Use it as a tool to navigate your life now. Because if you feel like you know something or somebody's giving you insight to what's happening in the future for you or the world, you make that change today because it can be changed. Nothing is set in stone. We have free will to change anything and everything. And if you understand that that's part of creation and manifesting, right? We can choose whatever we want now, which will be the end result of the future. And if we use the tool of the future to see based on where we're projecting and following whatever thread we're following, which is only individual, it's not for everybody because everybody has free will and choice. If you're following that thread and they're saying this, then you can use it to change now in the present moment if you don't want that. So let me give you an example. Like when you're using tarot, you can use that as prediction. So you're setting down, setting your intention, following the energy and vibration to what the future will be like based on what that's showing you. The tarot is going to reflect that. So then you can use that as a tool as a present moment to change it if you don't want that outcome, right? So you work on the present moment for that, right? It's not set in stone. You can change it. 
And I'll give you an example on that because I was working in a shop where one person had predicted somebody was going to die at a certain time, certain place, blah, blah, blah. One, this person is predicting for another person. Two, that person has free will and choice to change that outcome. So when you change it, it doesn't happen and that person didn't die and it changed the scenario. So no predictions are 100% accurate. It's just something that is a potential to be if we're going and following that direction and continue to pursue that um, direction in that happening, right? There's nothing that's set in stone except for your death. <laughs> and that we, we really never know because we can even change that except for when it is our real death because you have a lot of near-death people who experience dying, but they get the option to come back, so they're not really dying, right? So they get more chances. So, you know, really take a look at these things. Like when you people are saying, I'm predicting this, you know, um, untrue, right? Not factual. It's a potential, but it's not factual, right? And so <clears throat> a lot of people predict, oh, well, you know, we're going to have this war and that war, but when? And is it, is it on the timeline when it should be or when it's said, right? Is there any, like, exact moment and date of that when it's happening, right? And or is that all just perception, right? So kind of really look at that and use it as a tool, not per se as predicting something for somebody else because you're then interfering with another person, um, you know, and, and trying to influence them in having that when everybody has a say, everybody has free will and choice which is why we have the world that we have today, you know? If we were all one, then why would we be here, right? As a collective, we all have our own place, choice, and reason for being, right? And we can choose whatever it is that we want. So anybody who's predicting, um, of course there's potentials for war, of course there's potentials for floods, of course there's potentials for earthquakes, you know? It's just common sense, right? You're not really predicting anything. Uh, it's going to happen at some point. I mean, it's Earth. It's the world. You know, it's 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 natural phenomenon that these things happen, right? And it's going to happen at some point, right? And of course, we can get close to the timeline, but you know, there's no real frame of reference. You know, that anything's been chosen. It's never been a specific day and time that anybody's ever come up with. It's a potential. Um, anyway, so like. I don't know, I would stay away from those who are trying to protect for you or for somebody else or the world <laughs> at large uh, and, and doing the predictions because everything can change. Nothing's ever this, you know, set in stone. And when you're doing that, actually trying to predict, it's coming from a space of fear, fear of the unknown, fear of not knowing, right? Instead of trusting and allowing you to be in the present moment of your divine connection, a higher self, here and letting this guide you in the right direction so we're trying to look and foresee outside of ourselves to the future the potential that could be um, in that perspective right so and again <clears throat> it's just that you know that was based on her um point of view where everything's going and being predicted for her and for her to be in that space she was able to see, but that's, again, is only the world that she's creating for herself. It's not for anybody else, right? So if the only time it becomes that is when you're believing in her and taking that on for yourself, then you're giving your power away, right? So again, <clears throat> I would just stay away from those who are trying to predict stuff because it's not, it's not a whole 100% accurate and it's not always factual or true. Right. And so just use it as a tool. If you are going to go in that direction and try to do predictions, just use it as a tool based on, you know, what you can do in the present moment to change it. You know, if somebody had said, you know, you know, you're going to get ill or sick or whatever it is, you know, look at your life now in the moment. What am I doing that's maybe potentially um, contributing to that, you know, and then change it now in the present moment. Use it as a tool. You know, don't be giving your power away. Don't be doing it from a point of fear and not knowing and all this. Because I know, like, right now, there's a lot of stuff going on in the, in the world, and we really not, don't know where we're headed. But that's, 
again, the potential is not really what is right now because we can create now by just being centered um, in our present moment in the space of love and kindness, you know, and abundance, which changes the outcome, right? And so really take a look at these things and just wanted to bring that to the forefront. You know, when people are trying to give, you know, predictions, you know, it sets fear and perception for other people in their reality when they're in that space of not knowing, right? And so they're trusting in another person to be their guide, right? The other thing about that is predictions, right? So when we're sitting down and um, doing predictions, we're actually setting intention of following a path of energy because, for instance, if you were to drive a car and you're going to go right instead of left you're going to have two different experiences right which that's your choice your free will to choose everybody has that uh, but you're going to have two different experiences right so if you're going down the one path you know you can always change and come back to the other path right but it's just a different path we all have different paths if that makes sense, which is going to be a different outcome to the experience that we all have for ourselves. We're all, not all going to have the same experience, and you can just see that in the world. Like what one person sees about a movie, another person is going to see. You're going to have different responses to any situation, which is going to create the outcome and the experience, right? And so the other thing about, like I was saying about um, predictions, like there's a difference between predictions and tuning in and picking up on information that's out there, you're connecting into the um, what's going on in the present moment, right? You're, you're picking up and choosing and to connecting to the collective, right? There's also where you're receiving information, which is from your guides and angels and things like that. And I'll give you an example. This person was talking about, along with her prediction of 2,300, um, that she had predicted 9-11 um, and then also what was it, the COVID. But so did I. And it wasn't because I was predicting. It was because I just picked up on it and I was getting that information from my guides, my higher channel, right? So there's a difference between predicting and then receiving and, and being just tuned in. You receive information, right? And she had said it was very similar to my experience, right? And she was saying that she had just received it right before it happened, and so did I. I knew about 9-11 that morning, before, right before, because I had tuned in to it. And I had ended up calling off because I worked in one of the federal, um, federal government state buildings, right, um, at the time. And so I had gotten to, to call in, and I, I didn't understand why I was getting that information to call in to not go into work. Um, luckily, it wasn't one of the buildings that got attacked or whatever was going on, but it was still a potential for that to happen. So I called off and stayed home, sat down in front of the TV, and there it was, 9-11. I wasn't predicting, right? I was tuning in. I was tuned in, but I wasn't intentionally tuned in. It was something I was receiving from guidance, right, to not go into work that day. To sit in front of the TV and, and observe, be the observer of the situation of what's going on. And... So I follow my guidance. And so there's a difference between when we're sitting down and having the intention to predict, right, versus receiving information. Just like when COVID came and she said it just happened, she knew right before it happened, but so did I. A lot of us did. You know, it doesn't mean we're predicting. Uh, we're just tuned in and tapped in, receiving the information from our guides and whatever's going on in the energy and the vibration, right? Because it's all one. Right. And from that perspective, I was standing at work and it was like I, I knew that I wasn't going to be working at that job for long, but I didn't know why. Right. And this was probably like two weeks prior to. And then I had gotten this feeling like the following week and I wasn't sitting down trying to predict. I was just receiving. I was tuned, I'm tapped in, tuned in. And so this is what was coming in. And so the week before COVID, I was like, something's not good. Something's going to happen. And I said that to my supervisor. And she's like, what? I was like, I don't know yet, but it's coming. And so next thing I know, the following week, there it was, you know, COVID. Um, 
So these are things that you just receive when you're tapped in and tuned on. It doesn't mean you're predicting anything, but a lot of people like to say, oh, I'm pr I predicted this. We don't predict a lot of things, but we want to term it as predicting. We're just tuning in, tapped in, receiving the information from our guides and those who are helping guide us, right? And so uh, those are things just wanted to kind of put out there. Clarification on that is understanding where you're receiving the information from, how you're getting that, not that you're predicting it. Predicting is something you do intentionally. You sit down and predict it, right? Making space for that and then following that guide, right? So whether you're using your intuition, your guidance, um, but when you're just when you're just receiving information, you're just receiving information, right? And so that can be construed by what we're doing or believing in. And so just a little clarity on that. Um, so a lot of times we just mistake, you know, that we're predicting um, for just information that we're receiving, right? Um, and then the other thing, there was somebody who was saying uh, about uh, the universal laws. So uh, they were saying, and this comes from my channeling in the book of The Way Through, which, which is one of the universal laws, right? And it's about the existence, right? So what they're saying is, and this is what my guides are saying and what I'm getting from channeling the book, that it's not per se true. It's true to a certain point, but it's not accurate true. Um, so what they were saying is non-existent doesn't exist, but it does, right? So the book that I'm channeling and what my guides are showing me and telling me is that it's the law of one, right? And so which is the potential to exist. And, so, and you'll hear me say that in the book when I'm reading the little clips from the book um, as I'm channeling it. And it's the void, the darkness, the shadow aspects, right? And so there's the potential, right? So it's a law of one, which is the potential to exist as something else other than itself, which is being. So everything is always being at all times. So even the, the non-being is being because it's being something. Right? So it does exist. It just does it just exists as as something that doesn't exist. Everything exists. The potential to exist, which is the non existence of everything. Right? And so it is the non existence that exists as itself in being one to that which it is. Right? Whatever it is that it is, right? So when you turn the lights out in a house, darkness. Is darkness existing? It's, it is. It's existing. Right? It's just existing as darkness. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Source isn't in physical form. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right? Your thoughts exist. Just because it's not in physical form doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So what they're saying is non-existent doesn't exist because it's not existing, but it does. It's existing as non-existence. So even that is something. It's the potential to be one, which is something, right? And so, which is the space and time, and it holds itself up for the potential to become something. So it's the potential. So it is something that is existing, if that makes sense. I don't know, hopefully that will clear it up because a lot of stuff um, is being put out there and this is what I'm receiving, just to share this message, that a lot of things are being put out there that's miscued of the reasoning behind it, which changes the vibration and energy of everything that we're interpreting and seeing from our perspective. So just allowing that to sink in for a little bit and just kind of think about those things and allow them to, you know, be... Uh, with you in your own experience and your existence. So just kind of things to put out there. And that's pretty much everything that I just wanted to put in um, this video as far as, you know, um, those few topics. And thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys.